hello everyone. I'm Jia Hen. I'm a second year PhD student at Berkeley. And today I will talk about our recent work on transparent polynomial delegation and its applications to zero knowledge proofs. It is a joint work with Tianchen, Yupeng, and Dang. So first of all, what's the definition of the zero knowledge proofs? Suppose we have a prover and a verifier. And prover wants to convince the verifier the computation of some function f given the input w equals to y without leaking the information of the input w because this input is a secret information of prover and the prover doesn't want to leak the information to the verifier. And after seeing the proof and the, the output y, the verifier could check the proof and decide to accept or reject. And there are three important properties of zero knowledge proofs. Completeness means the verifier would accept if the computation is correct. And soundness means the verifier will accept with very low probability if the computation is wrong. And low probability means like something two to the power minus 100. Very, very small. And zero knowledge means after the process, the verifier could learn nothing about the secret of the prover, W. And there are three total uh, efficiency measures for zero knowledge proofs protocol. The proof time is a proof. Uh, it's a time for the prover to generate the proof. And proof size is the length of the proof. And verification time is the time for the verifier to check the proof. So in general, we just want fast prover time, fast verification time, and short proof. That's a perfect zero knowledge proofs. And there are many applications of zero knowledge proofs in the real world, since it could help people to protect, uh, to protect their privacy. For example, it could be used to do verifiable computing. And also, it could be deployed on the blockchain to preserve privacy of transactions. And Zcash is a good instance to be deployed on blockchain with this technique. So actually, Zcash just builds a bridge between zero knowledge proofs and original blockchain techniques. Because actually, there are several privacy problems in the original blockchain. All data are posted public on the chain for users to validate. That means the user could learn much information from uh, this history of the transactions. So using this public data, uh, actually we could do some data analysis on it and get much more information. For example, uh, in this 2013 paper, they could build a visualization of the user network using the history of the transactions in Bitcoin. Uh, in this graph, for edge to appear when two, uh, two nodes, there must, be at uh, there must be at least 200 transactions between them. And the area of the cluster, as you could see, represents the external income value. For example, the Bitcoins received from other clusters, but not itself. Actually, in fact, uh, in fact, we want to hide this information from the blockchain. So here, uh, zero knowledge proofs come in. And in Zcash, a transaction appears on the public blockchain. It is known to have occurred and the fees was paid. But the addresses and the transaction amount are all encrypted and not public visible, and other nodes could still verify the transaction. Because of the soundness property and zero knowledge property in zero knowledge proofs. And actually, uh, in Zcash, uh, they just use a specific zero knowledge proofs called Uh it, it is also widely deployed, and the snark means succinct, no interactive argument of knowledge. Actually, it has some really good properties, for example, it has constant proof, type, uh, proof size and fast verification time. However, it also has some shortcomings that limit the implementation of SNARK. Uh, firstly, it needs a function-dependent trusted setup, which means it needs to do pre-processing for each function, and that is super slow. And actually, for trusted setup, suppose we have a trusted third party. He could generate a secret key and he uses this secret key to generate public key PK and the verification key VK. Then the trusted third party destroys the secret key and sends the public key to the prover and the verification key to the verifier. So the verifier and the prover could use them in the following proof. 
But in real world, we don't know how to find a centralized trusted third party. And if we could, we don't need decentralized blockchain anymore because we know we have a trusted third party. And the security will be broken in a trusted setup if the secret key is leaked. In addition, uh, the prover time in Snark is also very small and the memory consumption is huge. Actually, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, for matrix multiplication, suppose the matrix size is 256 times uh, 256. The local computation is only uh, 52 uh, milliseconds, but using Snark, the prover time is very huge. It's over 1,000 seconds, and the memory usage is 32 GB. So in order to solve these problems in ZK Snark, several zero knowledge proof protocols are proposed in recent years. And these constructions are based on different models in cryptography, uh, including MPC in the head, or discrete log, interactive oracle proof, and the interactive proof. We also propose two protocols, Libra and the follow-up work Virgo. Both of them lie in the category of the interactive proof and they have the fastest proof time with succinct verification time and proof size for the structured circuit. So for next part, I will introduce Libra. It was published in Crypto 19, and here I should cl clarify it because it is not relevant to uh, anything about the Libra project in Facebook. We just submitted paper in February and uh, uh, Facebook announced their project in April, so it's just a nice coincidence. <laughs> and actually, Libra is a 16 zero knowledge proofs with optimal prover computation. And it is open source now, so you could check it on GitHub using the following link. Okay. Uh, the building block of Libra is the double efficient uh, interactive proofs proposed by Shafi Godwaso, uh, Yao Klein, and uh, Guy Rosblum in 2008. It is also well known as the GKR protocol because it is very important and widely used in many cryptography protocols. Uh, in this protocol, the verifier will delegate the computation of some circuit C uh, the, the, uh, to the prover, and that means uh, given an input X to the circuit, the evaluation of the circuit C should be Y. And well, uh, why is it called doubly efficient? Because the prover time only polynomial of the size of the circuit. And here, the size of the circuit means the number of the gates in the circuit. And the verification time is only logarithmic of the circuit size and the linear of the input size. So it is called doubly efficient. The specific GKR protocol is based on arithmetic layered circuit with fanning two. Uh, as you could see in the figure, layered circuits means there are only connections between adjacency layers. Arithmetic circuit means the circuit only has addition gate and multiplication gate. And the fanning two means the input wires of each gate are at most two. And here we let x be the input and uh, y be the output. So actually we could define polynomial uh, with d according to the input gate value, uh, x0, x1, x2, and x3. And we also use the binary strings to represent the number from uh, 0 to n. So we know the vd0 equals to x0, vd1 equals to x1, vd2 equals to x2, and so on and so forth. So we could define polynomial vd. And uh, actually similarly, we could define such function for each layer in the circuit from v0, v1 to vd. So when the verifier gets the output in the first round, he just get a statement about the polynomial V0 defined by the output. And then he could reduce this statement to the previous layer, to the polynomial defined by the, uh, the, first, uh, the first layer, uh, that is V1. And uh, he could reduce V1 to V2 and so on and so forth. And finally, layer by layer, it could be reduced to the statement uh, about VD, which is defined by the input X. And in original GKR protocol, uh, this post the verifier knows the input itself. So the verifier could verify the correctness itself. So here are some pros and cons uh, of GKR protocol. For example, uh, 
the prototype in GKR is very fast because there's no heavy cryptography operations. And actually, it doesn't need any trusted setup. And it has succinct verification and proof size for structured circuit. Uh, but there are also some drawbacks of GKR protocol because the verifier must know the input data and uh, it must store this data. So it's obvious not zero knowledge because the verifier knows the input itself. So to solve these problems uh, in GKR, John et al. proposed a new framework uh, called Vesico. And uh, in Vesico, this supports only prover knows the input. So uh, it works as follows. First, the prover commits the polynomial VD defined by the input X. And then the prover and the verifier engage to run the GKR protocol. So as I mentioned before, in the last round, when the verifier needs to verify the statement related to the polynomial VD, uh, he needs to do some evaluation on this polynomial. So he could ask prover to open this point VDR along with the proof pi, so the verifier could check it. So that's a good solution. But the bad thing is that VSQL is still not zero knowledge because the original GKR protocol will leak information about some gate values in the circuit. So we still need to do some work. And the follow up, uh, our work, Libra, based on the VSQL framework, has two important contributions. Uh, first of all, it proposes an optimal prover time algorithm, which is linear of the number of the circuit, uh, number of the gates in the circuit. It is optimal because the prover at least to run the circuit to get a correct uh, output. So linear is the optimal algorithm. And it remains the same proof size and verification time in VSQL or GKR. And another contribution is that we propose a very efficient method to turn VSQL into zero knowledge without any overhead. So to conclude, uh, Libra is a zero knowledge argument scheme with linear proof time, succinct proof size, and verification time. However, Libra also needs to do trusted setup for the polynomial evaluation. That means evaluate on a random point for polynomial VD. And it is based on bilinear pairing, so it has slow verification time, and it relies on secret, secret key, as I mentioned in the trusted setup. Again, to solve the problem in Libra, we propose a new zero knowledge verifiable polynomial delegation without trusted setup, and we call it Virgo. And transparent ZKVPD means the prover could convince the verifier the evaluation of a polynomial F on a random point, R, uh, on a random point A is FA without trusted setup. So you could see in the first round, the prover commits the coefficients of F and then he will receive a random point A from the verifier. And he computes FA along with the uh, proof pi and sends them back to the verifier and the verifier can check it. And here the zero knowledge means the verifier uh, couldn't know the polynomial F after this process. And here we just use a univariant polynomial F as an example and we could extend it to multivariant polynomial easily. So, Actually, our new ZKVPD protocol gets insights from the Aurora paper. We could rewrite the evaluation uh, of the polynomial F as an inner product of two vectors, C and A. And C is the coefficients of F, and A is the randomness generated by the verifier. So C is private to the prover, but A is public to the prover and the verifier. Uh, in the Aurora, the verifier works as follows. Uh, it expands A to a vector A, and uh, it encodes A using RS code with inverse FFT. And then it does some tests on the RS code defined by the vector A. Unfortunately, uh, as you can see, the verification time in Aurora is quasi linear because the verifier needs to do FFT and inverse FFT. Uh, that is quasi linear, n log n. So in order to improve the efficiency of the verifier in Aurora, we propose a new idea, where the verifier just needs to delegate the computation of FT and inverse F FT again to the prover using the GKR protocol. So in this case, although the circuit size to compute FFT is quasi linear, but as we, as we, we can learn, the, the verification time for GKR circuit 
it support, it's only logarithmic of the circuit size. So that is great. Actually, you could look at the picture. Uh, it, it explains the whole process. First, the prover just encodes C first uh, and send it to the verifier. And we suppose the encode A is the corresponding encode of A. And when queried uh, uh, some cells for this encode, the prover just sends back uh, the cell in encode C. And it also computes the cells in encode A using GQR circuit with the proof and sends them to the verifier. So the verifier only needs to check the correctness of the GQR circuit, which is only polylog. To be specific, the prover just encodes C first and sends back to the verifier, and then the verifier could send back random point A and the random cells he want to query for the encode from R1 to RK, and the prover sends back the result with a valid proof, so the verifier could verify it. The prover time is quasi linear n log n because the prover needs to do uh, FFT and inverse FFT. But the proof size and verification time is only polylog or uh, log square of n because they only need to, uh, it only need to verify the correctness of the computation. And I should mention here, uh, all of these things are based on symmetric key and random oracle, so which is very fast and post quantum secure. Look at the figures. Uh, it shows the comparison between our new ZKVPD protocol and the previous one based on bilinear pairing in Libra paper. So as you could see in the first picture uh, for the prover time, our prover time is much, much faster. Actually, it's at least 100 times speed up. And the verification time in this new ZKVPD protocol is also fast. It's also faster than previous one. However, uh, the proof size is larger because the constant uh, of the proof size in our new ZKVPD is very large because we need to do some test for the encode. Uh, if you know, we need to do a uh, load unit test or something else, so uh, which constants is very large, so that is reasonable. Okay. Ultimately, if we just apply this new ZKVPD protocol to Libra, we could get a new zero knowledge proof system without trusted setup, and uh, we call it Virgo. So it works as follows. The prover just commits a polynomial defined by the input, so which is VD, using the ZKVPD commitment. And then they run the Libra protocol, and in the last round, the verifier also needs to verify a random point R on the polynomial VD. And we just use the new ZKVPD protocol to open it and verify it. So that's a whole protocol. And in conclusion, the prover time is a linear of the circuit size plus the quasi linear of the input size. And the proof size and the verification time, both of them are logarithmic of the circuit size plus uh, poly, uh, polylog of the input size, which is better because we just, it, it, it improves the efficiency of the verifier and the proof size. Simultaneously, it removes the trusted setup. And also, it is based on symmetric key, which is fast and post-quantum secure. And here is a comparison uh, of Virgo to all other uh, existing transparent ZKP system. And, uh, transparent here means uh, no trusted setup. So that's an experiment result for proving Merkle tree, uh, Merkle tree roots with 256 leaves. And uh, that means we need to do total uh, 511 times Hashi function. And here we use SHAR 256 as a Hashi function. So we build a circuit and run the experiments on the circuit. And look at the table uh, for the prover time. Virgo is the uh, farthest and actually it at least one magnitude faster than all existing systems. And the verification time of Virgo is also very competitive. It's only a little bit slower than Stark, but faster than all other existing systems. And the proof size of Virgo is comparable. So in summary, we just propose a new transparent zero knowledge proofs Virgo 
with linear proof time, succinct verification time, and proof size, and it has really good performance in practice. So that's all. Thank you.